Hey, gearheads, it's Friday. That means it is, uh, what do we call this show anyway? Oh, that's right. It is This Week at Gear Report. That was supposed to be smooth. It was going to pop up right when I said that, but I hit the wrong button. So, bam! This Week at Gear Report. And TJ followed directions. I said, mute up. He is still muted because I saw his lips move and nothing else. There you go. All right, let's go around the room and say hi while we are given time for people to figure out we're live. I got to tell you um, that the, the, they've been merciless in the chat out there, um, you know, like waiting for us to get started very, very patiently. Where is it? Uh, here we go. Like this. So patiently waiting. Uh, so we're here. We're here. I, I, uh, I am pleased that we get to be people's uh, entertainment, get to come hang out with some family here on uh, Friday evening and talk about um, what we know. He's not doing the hobo look this time. OK, surf for shorts, which would be good if I ever stood up. But then you'd realize I may not even be wearing pants because, you know, this is like a nipples up. Um, camera angle he may not be so, wearing yeah. pants may not be <laughs> i know <laughs> you, you never know he um, referenced his underwear and his nipples in one sentence way to start the show i mean i know <laughs> i'm setting the bar high for this yeah. one guys. i mean yeah i mean where, where we go from here you know uh what are we doing below, below the belt below. oh my god ha jokes on you buck i don't have a boat um <laughs> <laughs> um, he has a ship. <laughs> I have a fleet, actually, uh, and they're not mine. This is the brilliant part. I've got to pat myself on the back here. Okay, I was a boat owner for years. I had big, expensive boats and spent thousands and thousands every year maintaining them and keeping them at a dock, and it was terrible. Uh, so now I maintain a fleet of boats for the Sea Scouts, and I don't have to own them or, you know, if I want to work on them, I work on them. If I don't, I don't. I don't have to pay anything for them. I get to go use them. I get to play with them when I want. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So that is my ringing endorsement for volunteering and helping youth learn how to do cool things like sailing. Because, you know, you get some benefit out of it, too. You get to help people out. So, all right. And I said we were going to go around the room. So why don't we do that? Uh, what is it? Clockwise, if we go to Toby, let's go to Toby. Sure. Hey, Toby. <laughs> Gear-report.com and minorridgearmory.com. Thanks for the invite. Happy to be here and happy almost fourth. Although, is it really the fourth if you can't do fireworks unless you're in your car or your front yard? I don't know. How's that fireworks really? in your is car? That, cool? that sounds fun. <laughs> I mean, from your car, you're allowed to go to a public place where there's launching fireworks. So long as you stay in your car, not get out and stand beside it, just stay in your car and watch from a distance. That's not what you said. I mean, not even close to a, what you said. B. Look, look, call me, look, call me. There's, I mean, we went from nipples and underwear to fireworks in your car. Why not? It's going to be a great show. It's oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Start the DVR, folks. What did we say last oh, week? Can Those we reset? Where's the reset? Wait. <laughs> Should we start over? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> hey, Gearheads, it's Jeff. Thank you for joining us for this week at Gear Report. We're going to have a great show this week. We really appreciate you being here. Uh, we're going to skip Toby for the introductions because everyone knows Toby. So, uh, TJ, you, you get to introduce yourself now that Come I've on, outed TJ you with TJ. Report. Down here in the old uh, Gunshine State, the only one of one of the few free states left right now, we get to shoot fireworks, go outside, do stuff. It's good times. All right, that was Great. very efficient. Right eh. <laughs> to the point, you know me. Yeah, Ghost, you're up. Hi, I'm Trey with Ghost Tactical. I'm here because I have to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's going on? Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Sorry I've been gone the last few weeks, but uh, got home from work and I uh, have some energy left. So let's talk gear. Yeah, let's do it. But not now because you're done. It's Mitch's turn. That's it. Okay. All hey, right. guys. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey, hey. 
Well, welcome to Gear Report, everybody. This is Mitch. Got some new stuff coming. Looking forward to getting that out there. Glad to be here celebrating the 4th of July all weekend inside. Super awesome. Fireworks in the house, in the tub. Let's do this. You're going to get video of that, right? You win. You're can better than me with Can't can either power. confirm nor deny. <laughs> so okay, what about some enough. cherry bombs in the toilet? Does that count? Oh, college. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he just said, he just said, <laughs> like he knows exactly what he, he's done that before. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, it's, mm, yeah. You never know with TJ. And uh, we, we get a quick introduction. Defense Dad is joining us. He is going to, uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit later about the uh, project that he participated in, but why don't you introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, thanks for the invite. Uh, uh, kind of glad to be here on a smaller channel, so it's kind of nice to hang out with the, the bigger boys tonight. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I laugh at us, not you. Just I want you to understand. No, that I'm was a self-deprecating laugh because we're allowed to do those. All right, let's see what's happening in the comments. Um, you know, I was listening to some guy on a podcast uh, this morning. I got up at like 5.20 this morning to go work on one of the cars before it got too hot. And he went on early about, you know, text us. If you, if you need to make a comment and we're not answering, go ahead and text us. I don't think we're going to do that. But I will say, if you're out there, we don't know you're there. It was Ghost, by the way. I was being very cryptic hinting that i was listening to someone on a podcast it was ghost and uh, i'm not it was very smart dude it was a good podcast by the way um about ammo and such um yeah it was very interesting so um anyhow the point was what was the point if you don't leave a comment we don't know you're there so let us know let us know and this is interactive right so the goal here is we're going to talk about, oh, you know what? I'm even going to change the banner. We're going to talk about recently completed reviews, and then we're going to talk about the special project that had um, that had uh, a few of us shooting things, and, uh, and then we'll talk about stuff that's coming up. And then who knows? We may even get into the shit shooting portion of the show, which is always the most exciting, I think. So, uh, but that's the general well, format, you know, only if you can aim well, I mean, if you, if you miss, then it really doesn't do anything. I have been eating a lot of salad lately. So you ever, you remember those old uh, Ronco commercials for the uh, salad shooter? Oh my gosh. Yes. I forgot about that thing. Yeah. There you go, Jeff. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I used to, I used to be able to read a little bit of Korean, not much at all. Like I could sound it out. I didn't necessarily know what it meant, but even without looking at the letters, I know what that means. That means super hot, super hot, burn you later. That was my dinner. Hmm. Congratulations. All right. So TJ will be with us for about half the show and then it'll disappear for seven and a half minutes. <laughs> so you are actually going to bomb your toilet. Got it. <laughs> yes. cherry bomb. Yeah. And it, and it won't be a cherry bomb. I promise you. We'll Can we and that's true. And that's we'll true, do. Jeff. You technically could, yes. Could what? Text that Text same, number, same for number for the same show. show. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. at it. You know, I encourage people to um, to, to blow up my phone. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as far as you know, I have never ever encouraged anyone to um, submit your email to any of the. You know, political not. candidate sites or act, political action committees or anything. Uh, we're going to ignore this one because that is foolishness right here. All right. We're not even going to read what that one said. Well, for, for the last three years, I, every time I have a complaint department, I tell everyone to send their complaints to shooting left of center at gmail.com, which is Yankee Marshall's email address. So everyone gets, <laughs> he gets all of my uh, hate mail. That's awesome. Every now, on, every now and then I'll get a text from him saying, you know, F you, man. <laughs> like, you're welcome. Yeah. All right. Well, um, with that, 
Let's, I'm going to start using that one too, I think. And, uh, you know, it's funny you say that because um, I think he's very deserving of that. He, he brings a lot of hate on himself. So, all right, we're going to skip Good that guy. first one. No, we're going to come back to that one. <laughs> hey, that was a lot of fun. All right, what did we talk about last? The last show was what, the 26th? Yeah. Wow. So there's a lot been published. We talked about the Diamondback interview. We didn't talk about Lorelock, did we? No. No. So, uh, all right. So I'll give you a quick tour of this one because uh, Joe's not here. And also because he's not here, I can admit that I initially did the social media blast and gave someone else credit for this. And then <laughs> I opened it to make an edit and was like, wait a second. I just posted on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and everywhere that Stanley wrote this. And Stanley didn't write this. So, yeah, sorry about that, Joe. But um, so you can see the way these tackle boxes are standing up. The deal with the lure lock is that it has some like stickiness in it where the lures get you stick them in place. So then they don't bounce all over the place, which I think potentially is kind of neat. Um, I don't fish, but it, it looked like kind of a neat concept to me. You don't have to worry about stuff bouncing around, getting tangled up, I guess. So, yeah. Had anyone anyone here heard of lure lock tackle boxes before? I have, I have not heard of lure lock tackle boxes. And I, I you were the one I was counting regular on. Regular tackle boxes, but not lure lock. Yeah, you're the one I was counting on because I, you have the I know. closest uh, fishing credentials, you know. Yeah, we, haven't, uh, we haven't heard of them or used them, but I'm thinking about getting one and, and uh, testing it out. We'll see. Yeah. Joe liked them. What did he rate this? It was high. Oh yeah. It was high four and a half. That's Whoa. damn near perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I hesitated. I was like, Whoa, pump your brakes, Joe. Four and a half. That's like the highest we ever give, but you know, he was, he was adamant. He liked them. So, well, did you guys notice that as soon as this was published, we got the big mass email explaining what the gear system actually <laughs> means. So I think that's why that, that was message was sent. <laughs> you think? Some people need more <laughs> guidance than others, Trey. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah. No, that's all I'm saying. All right. But, you know, that's all I, that I'm saying because it's your turn to talk because this is your review, Trey. Okay, so we've got the uh, Bushnell Elite Tactical uh, CQTS 2.0, and, and it's a red dot. It, it's a, I really did enjoy this thing, and um, you know, I'll, I'll say this: it is it, the reticle is extremely clear, the glass is clear, it's durable for the most part. Had a little issues with the uh, lens covers after torturing it with a bottle that got corrected, but you can take those off anyway, so it doesn't. It really doesn't affect it. The only thing that I would say is this. Uh, the reason why I didn't get, I mean, four, four gears is still pretty good, but I would have given it more because I really think it's a phenomenal red dot. But I'm a little worried at the price point. Now, the MSRP can throw out the window. It's it's three forty nine dollars for the MSRP because everyone's selling them for two forty nine. dollars Unfortunately, at the two forty nine dollars price point, you're putting yourself up against some pretty pretty hefty competition at that point. And I'm a little worried that it doesn't offer quite enough to beat that 249 price point. I think, honestly, if it was priced around 179, I think it'd probably be as good of anything in that price point that there is in the market. Uh, maybe the best thing in the price point. But I really did enjoy it. It held zero. It is durable. It looks good. Um, it works great with a 3x magnifier, which is good. A lot of things sometimes they don't always work well with them. Right. Um, everything, everything was great about it. Like I said, the only thing that I worry about is the price point. And I think if it was a 179 red dot versus a 249, it would be as good as anything in that price range out there. And you're talking about street price, not MSRP. Street price, yeah. MSRP is like 350, but most online yeah. sites, almost right. every right. single one of them, are are selling them for 249. But I said if it was a 179, you know, out the door price. It would be phenomenal at two forty nine. It's still good, but you're putting yourself in that category of the two hundred fifty dollar red dot. That there are some pretty heavy hitters in that price point at one seventy nine to one ninety nine. You could probably do really well with it. 
Gotcha. So I haven't checked to see if it's on sale anywhere for the 4th of July weekend sales. But I mean, you know, this is capitalist America and any reason to have a sale uh, any and every single weekend. So maybe someone can go out and find it uh, closer to that price point that, that you like for it. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, like you said, if there's ever going to be one outside of the Black Friday sales, this would probably be the one. So, I mean, like I said, you know, Optics Planet, there's other great places out there that might have it for sale. Um, but everywhere that I've found it as of, you know, a week ago was that 249 239 249 You knock 50 bucks off of that, whatever, and I think you got a home run. Yeah, because you need $50 to – no, never mind. Not even going to go there. To make you holla? Need $50 yeah. to make you holla? Yeah. <laughs> $50. It's one of those nights. What can I tell you? All right. So thank you. We, we appreciate you giving us kind of the, the high level look at that. And now why don't we, uh, oh, there they go. The yep, dogs yep. know when it's TJ's turn to talk. They do. <laughs> I know it. Yeah. And, and Todd is probably over there just riling them up to, uh, all right, it's his turn. Start yapping. Get, get them fired up. <clears throat> yeah. All right, you want to talk about some uh, Ear Pro, TJ? Yeah, I did the uh, just finished up the uh, the Peltor, the Sport Tactical 500, and uh, we got the uh, what was it 2018 when I got that first set at Shot Show, and you guys probably were yeah, I think so. And I've been using them ever since, and since then I've bought, I think I've purchased two more pairs, and they sent us another wow. pair, and I mean they're they're fantastic. We used them at uh, at Battlefield Vegas. Shooting the Bofors, shooting the the Ma Deuce. Um, never had any issues. I've I've changed the batteries in them once. You know they they have the auto shut off. Thank God, because I still like <laughs> like, like the reuse. I still don't have batteries in my freaking pack. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they're comfortable. Like you know, it's like it's like anything else. If you wear them for two three hours, they they toast up your ears down here in Florida. So I guess yeah, sweaty a little shabby. So do you have any issues with uh, when wearing them, not just heat, but um, is there enough room for your ears? There is, there is enough. I mean, after it's, it's like anything, like after an hour, hour and a half, like uh, if I wear, I have two different sets of glasses. One of the sets I'll feel a little bit like right here, a little pressure in um, the other set. I don't cause they're a little more flexible. Um, yeah. They, they're, they're, they're comfortable and, like I said, I, I really enjoyed them, and I, that's all I have right now. Like everything else is yeah. gone. Really? Yep. Oh, you mean it's only a headset you have? Okay, I got you. I thought you were talking about something else. I got confused. I'm very easily confused. So We know. Uh, but, but check it out on the screen there. Is that awesome or what? That is TJ not just sitting in the armor personnel carrier holding the machine gun that's 50 cal brass dropping out yeah. of it you got that was a good picture jeff you got that brass hanging right there i saw it that was uh, that was a screen grab out of video uh as was the one down here oh come on scrolling 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 there it is Shooting I the think, artillery. I think you just—I think you just zoomed in on 22 LR. I'm, I, I can't prove that, but it looks like you just zoomed in on it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. We would do that. I mean, we would never do that. No, <laughs> never. never. No, but that's awesome. I mean, I had to—I had to share the picture of wearing the wearing that ear pro, which you can clearly see in the picture right here. And then on the other side right there. Um, but, yeah, that was pretty cool. There's Jeff in the picture. It's nice. Where was I? Oh, yeah. That's the, that's the real there. reason he added that picture. You know, that's the real reason. Yep. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. Build that yep. ego. There I am. It's massive. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's like my dad bod belly. It's getting bigger every day. There we go. Oh, and so the neat thing, if you would like multiple perspectives on the 3M Peltor Sport Tactical 
500. Then Jose Juan also reviewed them. Um, I was about to say he's wearing them backwards. I think he may be wearing them backwards in that picture. <laughs> Interesting. Um, and then who else did? AJ. Is it? I think so. Was it? We shall see. AJ. Yep, that's who it was. Yep, and there may be another one out there somewhere. I don't remember. Um, those have been very popular. We have been very fortunate to have a good relationship with uh, 3M Peltor. And uh, I am on a run. I'm like five years in a row of hitting them up at range day. Hey, some of my guys need some headsets. You got some more 500s? And uh, I've had pretty good luck with that. So, yeah. And then we had some more sent out mm. for review this year. So, uh, but, you know, in all honesty, especially for, the, for, for everyone here who is reviewing stuff, um, it really makes sense for them, for brands to partner with, uh, with folks like us who are reviewing lots of stuff because, um, you know, lots of guns because we're going to, uh, you know, people are going to see their headsets over and over and over, you know, so really works out. They are, uh, they, they have kind of quietly become the unofficial official uh, ear pro of gear report, like with no formal agreement, certainly no sponsorship money, but I'm not bitter about that. Yeah. But they've, they've sent enough headsets to the gear report team that just about everyone has them and wears them. Um, hmm. AJ is not here. Why have you gotten a set yet, Trey? <laughs> no, I've got, that was, that I've was got, a uh, tell that he did not. I felt, so I was no, I was just joking. I, I I've got, a deal with other ones. So that's what I wear anyways. That's a good way to spin that. There you go. All right. I can, I can maybe work some magic and hook you up at some point. If you need a set, I got a lot of problems, Jeff, but hearing pro ain't one of them. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me get this back to the right size. We'll, we'll go quickly through this since AJ's not with us. And, um, you probably can't see in my little window up there. But I'm holding the big brother, the uh, switchblade. What is this called? It is just switchblade, right? No, stinger switchblade. And then he has the Stryon switchblade here in the review, which is the smaller version of the, the one that I have here. Absolutely awesome little flashlight. Um, I think we previewed this one a week or so ago because uh, it was about to publish. Uh, this one's a little more compact than the one that uh, that I have, and I'm kind of jealous because it. I think it's uh, going to be a little more handy around the shop. He used it in the garage, uh, working on vehicles, and in the gun room, working on guns. And it looks like it's about the right size for all that. So, um, oh, and look at that. He's got it shining on his uh, new Bubba Rope uh, winch cable, which is pretty cool, a synthetic winch cable. Um, did, he leave, did he leave it in the wheel well for six months? Um, I encouraged him to. I said, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to review stuff, but this is kind of where the bar has been set. <laughs> Put it somewhere and forget about it. Yep, and drive all over creation. Like, I'm pretty sure we drove to Palmetto State Armory and back, which is, you know, four or five hours. Um, like, four hours each way, I think. And it didn't bounce out once, which is amazing. Pretty cool light. It does um, white light, uh, the, the kind of the blue tone. The, the warmer, more uh, yellow kind of sunlight type tone, and then the UV, which they say is for um, generally for automotive use, looking for like air conditioner type leaks. But we all know what else you can use that for, right? Blood tracking. Well, I was going to say killing the coof, but. Wow. Yeah. I'm not even sure what he just said, but. Um, 
but the UV is supposed to work really well. Like if you're hunting and your deer's getting away or something, you know, you're losing the blood trail, uh, that UV light's supposed to work well for blood tracking, as far as I know. So let's see. He gave it a four out of five. We're on a run here today with uh, people rating things really highly in the reviews. So um, let's see. Oh, this is another new one. July 1st, the first review of the month was also the first review for Brad Wayne. Uh, and uh, he followed in the footsteps of uh, a couple other writers who chose a Gerber knife as their very first item to review. Another four out of five gear. So he was pretty happy with it. I think that if you read this one, what you'll find is it's a qualified four out of five. And basically this is like a $24, $25 knife. Um, and for that kind of money, it's a pretty awesome knife is, is kind of what I got out of this review. Um, if you're looking for, you know, something's going to hold an edge forever and you can pry stuff with it and, you know, be really rough and eh, maybe you want something a little bigger and more stout, but a little kind of light duty pocket knife. It's pretty awesome is, is kind of what I got out of this. But, uh, I encourage you to go read the review yourself and see what you get out of it. Because um, I don't know how safe it is to trust me. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm trying to burn through these quickly because no one wants to uh, no one wants to listen to me do all this. All right. Let's go look at some uh, comments here real quick. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So. I might have, might have been alluding to that as well. So, you know, if you have a teenage son, you probably don't want to take the black light in his room near his computer, for example, right? Just saying. Especially around the keyboard, you know. Ooh, this one's scary. Checking the sheets on hotel beds. Yeah. Not if you want to be able to sleep, I'm thinking. Yeah, certainly not in Vegas. Oh, not my goodness. Could you imagine? Oh. oh my god! It would it would glow like this. It would glow like it was like part of the strip. I mean, it would <laughs> like the strip normally, not the strip now, because some uh, of the places we right. Ooh, I uh, I talked to Bump yesterday, uh, oh. and not everyone here knows Bump, but most most of the people here know Bump. Uh, Bump hadn't made it to SHOT Show with us in a couple years because he's had personal stuff going on, just happened to have personal stuff going on that week for the past couple years. But uh, he did SHOT Show with us two or three years in a row. Um, awesome dude who lives in Vegas. So he was telling me that they rode down the strip uh, like a week ago, and it was a friggin' ghost town. Like they're sitting at a stoplight, that red, there's literally no one, you know, the strip is like super long and straight and not a single car in front of them, not a single car behind them, no lights on. He said it felt like nuclear apocalypse, crazy, just nothing going on in Vegas. And I was like, dang. Yeah. So, um, Calaveras 32 special. I think I need to look into writing for these guys. I am going to take this opportunity um, almost as if it were planned to, to go to the page. You can see up at the top, there is a link on that, the far right link on the orange bar at the top, right for gear report, how to become an outdoor writer and what, it, and, and what happens then, Toby? Live that dream. Living the dream. Yep. Oh, right. I was gonna say I was gonna say sell your soul, but uh, yeah, li live that dream also works. Yeah, yeah, you can keep on living your dream. Def that's why I called on you, Toby, because it well, kind of nightmares are still okay. dreams, right? Exactly. That is right. And if 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 your dream is to be a cuck, then perfect. Oh my goodness! I, I thought we were done with the Yankee talk. Come on. Oh. I still hate that picture, by the way. Because you're not in it, or because you yeah. took it. Well, if you took a better I didn't, picture, I didn't take it. If you had have taken a better well, picture, I, I didn't you may take have it. Taken I wasn't invited picture. into it, so you know. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> how much how much whining do I have to endure here? 
Well, enough of to last till January, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So anyhow, this is this is how you if you if you want to live that dream. It, let's say I'm even leading with what's in it for you, right? Because that that's what's more important to me. It's what's in it for you, right? And then the different ways we can work with people. So if you're interested, if you know someone who might be interested, if you want to be an Oompa Loompa, um, yeah, your face isn't exactly purple. Maybe not an Oompa Loompa. Um, you I mean, know, we I have, have a we have, I have a face for radio, man. <laughs> we, we we have we have options for a variety of ways we can work with people. As long as it's mutually ben beneficial, I really don't care. We can get creative. Um, and then even a, an outline review. If anyone wants to throw something together and send it to me, there's the review to use. So put that review together. Send it. All right. So now we're back to Stanley's first article. So we, oh boy, was it a month ago? A month ago, maybe, that we had uh, Stanley Orchard on this show. Well, I finally got his first article edited. He sent it in a couple days later, and it took me forever to get to it. Oompa Loompa. Were Ghost and Clover not good enough? Well, I never said they're not good enough. Just, uh, you know, coincidence that the coloration in that picture from the press room at SHOT Show... I made him look kind of oompa loompa -ish. That's it. That, that was a that was a good day too. <laughs> well, you know, in all seriousness, um, the press room, the new product center, um, the the uh, what what do they call the one upstairs? The pop up preview room. All yeah, of them. Yeah. Um, the uh, the next hallway. These are all different places where uh, brands have their booths set up and they're displaying and demonstrating. And, and us as media, we want to go take pictures and video. The lighting is heinously bad in almost every one of those places. Makes it very yes, difficult. It is. Yes, it is. So Stanley comes to us on a, on a very high recommendation from the tactical leprechaun himself who says he is the fish whisperer he will do great fishing content and then what's his first article how to do pictures and video for cheap i'm like come on fishing because i hate fishing i don't want to write about fishing i need someone else to write about fishing i shouldn't say i hate fishing i like eating fish i'm not a big fan of the other stuff that comes along with it but what's interesting here, and I think that uh, Defense Dad mentioned something about uh, using a uh, cell phone, not a computer. Um, Stanley also, he, he didn't even own a computer, as he told us a few weeks ago, everything on the cell phone. So now you can see all his secrets of the tools that he uses. Um, any of you guys have the Gorillapod? No, TJ, I know, has a... Uh, a faux gorilla pod. Yeah, I've There's got a fake, uh, yeah. a fake one. I've got it's pretty awesome. Yeah, the imitation. Yeah, yeah, and I'm tempted to get one. A clone. It's, it's a way cheaper yeah. phone. Yeah, I mean Stanley went high end with this stuff. Gorilla pod, yeah. Rode mic, um, but then photo editing is is an app on his Android phone, um, and I'm like, really? A f but it, it works for him. You look at his stuff, go, go look at his uh, Instagram. And I'm like, damn, your pictures look better than my pictures. And you're just using a phone. And I've got like a Nikon camera and a bunch of different lenses and filters. And yeah, so it's making me feel bad about myself. I'm going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a good article, though. I mean, if you want to see... Um, if you want to see some options on on how to do things a little differently, then uh, that's pretty good. All right. Oh, I'm clicking the wrong screen. No wonder it wasn't loading. This is a guest post that uh, was sent in that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, I'd never heard, for example, of a bite irritation relief device that's a little, you know, battery operated thing that, that does something to relieve the itch, like the bite helper. Um, 
helps dilute the irritant and increase blood flow. Has anyone used anything like that? No. No. Yeah. Smartphone maps, most of us have probably used that. Thermal monocular, that is pretty cool. I need one. Um, you have a thermal scope you're reviewing now. Is that right, Trey? I'm sorry. What'd you say? You have a thermal in the review? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing. Uh, it's an AT and Thor 4. Uh, a buddy of mine has it, and he doesn't know how to use it. So he said, take oh. this for a month, learn how to use it, review it, do videos with it, whatever, and then I can teach him how to use it. So. Uh, he owns several McDonald's, so money's not a problem. He just doesn't know anything about them. <laughs> gotcha. All right, cool. Good to know. I see. I was, I was assuming that you'd hooked up with Steve at ATN and it worked. I would love out. to, but not yet. Okay, we'll get done with this one and publish something, and we can send it to Steve and say, "Yeah, for sure." Hey, send it. Uh, although we need to coordinate that. Oh, yeah, sure. No. I mean, when I get it done, I'll let you know for sure. Yep. Good. I've had that on my list for a long time to review. I just hadn't got around to doing it. And I mean, let's be honest. When am I going to have time? So I'll just tell him to send it to you and you can review it. That'll be good. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Tactical wallet. That sounds interesting with tools built into it. The spotting scope, I went ahead and put the, the phone scope adapter picture in there because that's pretty cool. Wind detector, um, as an electronic technology item, that's something kind of new to me. I'd always use the little, uh, like a little puffer bottle with some powder in it to see which way the wind carries it. Portable camping grill, that's kind of presumptive. I think if you take the grill with you when you go hunting, you're a badass, I think, or setting yourself up to look silly. I don't know. All right. So anyhow, that's what we have there. I encourage you to go read that. If any of those things interested you, and if you get the bite relief technology product, please let me know how that worked because that looked kind of interesting to me. All right. Before we dive into the last one, let's see. Oh, G-Webs is here. Jacob Perkins is here. Look at that. Come on, G. That was mean. I have feeling. Come on. Yeah. His wind dial was going off the charts when we were in Vegas. As he was doing, you know, figure eights in the parking lot for an hour and a half. So his his GPS and wind dial was driving him nuts. So since since Mr. G Webbs himself is here in the chat, G, did you ever publish? anything with that figure eights in the parking lot video. Cause I want to see it. It looked like you were having a blast. <laughs> I, it really here, I did. actually want to see it. So I want to see it. If you haven't published it yet, then come on, step to it, please, sir. All right. All right. Last thing in the, we're going to skip the pass the mag and talk about that in a minute. And there I go clicking the wrong screen again. Let me get back over here. And so we did last week, we had the Diamondback brand overview interview that we did in the conference room. So uh, TJ got to flex his camera operator muscles. And uh, um, I don't know if you get the, uh, you know, the professional camera operator credits for that or not. You know, frankly, I don't know how all that unionized stuff works, but, um, but, you know, um, uh, you know, informally, at least, you get all the credit in the world for doing that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm trying to take care of you. So so what you see is a little bit of a description of what we did in the text here and then the video. And this video, I, you know, this, this was a pain to edit. It's almost 20 minutes long. Um, and the sound isn't on for this portion. But let's just watch it. All right, so it's 20 minutes. We probably don't want to watch the whole thing. But um, if you ever wanted to see what a growing, but you know, there, I, th I think it's fair to call them kind of a mid-sized company now with oh, yeah. all the different CNC machines and everything. Uh, they've grown a lot in the past few years, I think. I mean, I hadn't been to their facility before, but, um, but they were bigger than I expected. 
Um, you know, we walk through uh, raw material coming in the building, through all the different machining processes. Um, and I'll be honest with you, coming up in just a second on the video, is it streaming okay? Can you see it? Yeah. Because this part coming up weirded me out, right? T, do you remember what happened here? With the, uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying, if you watch the video, it says, I'm not saying that this machine operator is in the witness protection program, but between oh. us, but between us, yes, I'm still not going to say it, but yeah. So anyhow, we went and we followed the, this uh, raw metal and parts and stuff as it came in. There's a barrel being threaded, uh, not threaded. Uh, what do they call it? Rifled. Yeah. And then Johnny Five there making uh, uh, loading up the barrel profiling machine. That was pretty cool. Oh, there he is. Johnny Five. And then we had uh, a look at you know, how the parts came in. That was, okay, there, here's something neat that I hadn't seen before, broaching. So cutting the magwell in one cut. And if you've ever done something like, uh, like we've got the, the Ghost Gunner 2 and have uh, put an 80% on there, and it takes like four hours to do the cut that that broach just did in, what was it, six seconds or something? Four seconds. It's crazy. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, because it, it's it was interesting. Because I was watching this stuff, and I and I knew you guys were doing some stuff at Diamondback, but for some reason, I don't know why, but I felt like I heard a couple three months ago that they were going out of business, and I was like, and then I see you guys down the factory, and I was like, I thought they were out of business. So I don't know who I where I thought I heard that from, but that's it. Looks like they're thriving. They they're thriving away. It, it certainly did look like that. Oh, and let me see where I think I went too far. I wanted to show you guys one other thing. There we go. That they make a bunch of boat parts and stuff as well. So that was that was really neat. Unexpected to see like, hmm, wakeboard towers. Interesting. Yeah, so so yeah. interesting, interesting side point. So I actually own two of the Diamondback AR pattern rifles. I've owned them for several, several, several years. And I uh, used to sell a whole bunch of them, you know, as an FFL. And they sold very well because they tend to put a lot of high-end parts. I'm sorry, higher end touches on their rifles at a lower end price point. But Diamondback actually started, you know, making, what are they, uh, swamp buggies? That's where they got their start before they got into pistols and rifles and that kind of thing. And the guys decided, you know what, I want to make me some guns. And that's literally what happened. They went from swamp buggies to guns. Yeah. Yeah. Airboats. And, uh, yeah. Had we scheduled in advance, we may have been able to get to go out on an airboat. So, TJ, how about a, you, you down for an assignment? Yep. Lay it on me. You want me to get, get us lined up? I, I, it doesn't have to be us. I mean, you can do it if you want. I'll do it. I was trying to go get some video. Up. I was trying to line up one for uh, testing and evaluation. See if we can just, like, hey, give us one. That may be pushing Sea scouts. Sea scouts. See scouts yeah. made a bug. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That that may be pushing it just a little bit, but um but you know, you ought to go for a ride. If it works out next time I'm down there we can go we can go do it. But yeah, I don't know. I'll check if it they'll out. do it. I'll I didn't. Speaking yeah. of which, when's the gear report doom buggy from um Shot Show? What was that? Uh ATAC? When yeah. you guys get the gear report uh, doom buggy real to be delivered? Because I want to be there for that. <sighs> We didn't, which reminds me, I never published that video. I need to do that. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. What was that thing called again? Ah, it was, it was an Israeli company, I right? I don't remember. And yeah, that it was thing awesome was though. Crazy. Tom, top cat, Tom cat, top cat. Yeah. Tom, top cat sounds familiar. Yeah. Something like that. And then when, uh, when TJ and I went out to Battlefield Vegas, we went to their outdoor facility and they had one of them sitting out there, one or two. Oh, wow. Um, and it was kind of in pieces because, uh, but, but they had some high profile, like a pro sports team coming in and they're like, guys, I know we were, I told you we could do whatever we wanted. We're here all day, but we got this huge pile of money 
thrown at us to accommodate this this big like NFL team or NBA team or something. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was like, hey, we will do everything we can as quick as we can. And we want to treat you right. But you got to understand the amount of money they threw at us. We couldn't say no. I was like, hey, that's cool. Yep. So we didn't didn't get to do that. But I remember uh, in and we were uh, in, in Pendleton one year and we were out at the range and we were shooting like 50 cows, Mark 19, 60s, 240s and like the, the, the cool stuff. And all of a sudden we hear cease fire, cease fire. And they said, all right, guys, step back. And the San Francisco 49ers, I guess, had won a Super Bowl the year before. And there's literally Jerry Rice, Steve Young and like like 10 of these guys. And I don't know yeah. how they hooked it up with the Marine Corps, but they came out and we had to teach them how to shoot the guns. So it was pretty cool. But, you know, if you've got enough money, you can get a lot of things done, you know? Yeah. Appar- right. Apparently that is absolutely – oh, what happened? Yeah, apparently it's absolutely true. All right. What was I trying to do over here? I don't even know. Nobody knows. This is the time in the show where you are reminded that the person running the control board is incompetent. Yep. We okay. Are you sure you don't have to remind them of that? Yeah, we've known Jeff. Yeah. Incontinent, I, it, incontinent or incompetent? Yes. Okay. All of the yes. above. All of the above? Yes. So... I'm looking. G-Web's never answered, did he? No, he said that uh, he had one of his hard drives go down that had all of his oh. all of 2019 and early 2020 stuff. Oh, that is that's a lot of footage. Yes, man. Did any of us get video of him doing those circles? I think that we were so surprised and and, and, and almost a little um, worried about him. That we didn't grab our phones because we didn't know if something was actually wrong right. with them or not. Right. Yeah, because I remember as we're getting closer, going, um, "What is? Is going that on? G? That looks like G's <laughs> Why is he band? doing donuts? <laughs> He's just over and over. <laughs> yeah, he was so excited though. That was really fun to watch. Okay. So let's let's welcome uh, or you know what I'm going to I'm going to give him a warning defense dad we are about to go to you so if he is out there uh, yeah. oh and he unmuted he's he paying attention he is yeah, a he's alive yeah all right so um, why why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and about this project that we were a part of while I am uh, kind of queuing it up here on the screen. Okay. Yeah. Um, thanks again for having me. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm kind of due to all this as far as, especially the YouTube part of it. I, I started my channel just to help other people learn how to protect their kids. Um, and I was, you know, I was pretty honored to be invited to join this uh, project and it's just kind of fun. It's, it's, it's really neat to see, you know, gun websites from big ones to small ones across the country being joined in part of this project and getting the, you know, the, the word out. So that's about all I got to say. Yeah. So the project is uh, pass the mag. Oh, there I go trying to scroll the wrong page again. All right, here we go. Pass the mag. And I did a gratuitous self-promotion on the thumbnail here. You did. And just put a picture of myself because you know, with glorious hair. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm kind of proud of that, actually. Um, I don't break that wig out very often, but when I do, man, it's a special occasion. So the past the mag, uh, talking about big channels, some of the big boys and girls um, broke out this past the mag. Does anyone know, like, did they start this or how did how did pass the mag start? So CMMG uh, sent a, sent a bunch of guns out to people, 
And part of the marketing side of it was to do this past the max. The original one was CMMG did it. Uh huh. And that's the one that we're seeing here that has Brandon and yeah. Tim and Eric and yeah, yeah, and forgotten guy, um, Colonel Custer. Is that it? Who it is? I should know who that is. I, I'm blanking on his name, though, um, from Forgotten Weapons. But anyhow, so that was the first one. It was really long, and the production value on everything was absolutely fantastic, and the creativity was amazing. And I thought uh, one one that just made me laugh was um, Dave uh, uh, Plinkster. 22 Plinkster is shooting. And uh, well, so he starts out in his farm get up and then he's wearing a suit with his hat backwards. He looks like the do perfect guys when they when they dress like that. And uh, as he's shooting, he pulls out and starts eating an apple just so casually. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. Um, so anyhow, that was round one. Round two. I missed round two. I don't know how that happened so quickly, but um it all happened, honestly, in about one week. I mean, we literally were on a time frame. We had like four days to get the stuff to them. So, right. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that was the first time I was in Florida down with um, down with uh, TJ. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I blanked on your name, dude. It happens. At least I didn't completely black out this time. So, um, so he's the real forgotten weapons guy then, huh? Oh yeah. Oh dude, you have no idea how much stuff I've forgotten. My wife hassles me like you wouldn't believe. All right. So anyhow, they, uh, they did this. So, um, Clover and, uh, Trey and Kellyanne, you see there in the screenshot and, uh, budget, and Toby had a hilarious COVID-inspired, um, uh, very energetic segment in there. And, uh, and again, the production value in most cases was pretty impressive. Um, I think we should do a gear report past the mag, but have it from like different like a hammock thing to a fishing thing to a gun thing to a Humvee thing. And kind of incorporate passing different things from the gear report. That'd be kind of cool. Pass the gear, maybe. Pass the gear. There you go. We can pass the gear. Um, I don't want anyone to get too biological with that because that pass video I don't want to watch. Pass the swag. Pass the Ooh, swag. there you go. We could we could definitely come up with something. Um, who who wants to head that up? I mean, you guys get me the clips. I'll do the editing. That's not a problem. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of particular about editing. Um, well, then I'm not your guy. Then. <laughs> <laughs> you, you edit stuff good. That'd be, that'd be fine. Um, anyhow, that was a really good video. And I was actually invited to that one and circulated it among the gear report team. And, hey, who wants to do this? But I was tied up and didn't have time to do it. Uh, and I was a little upset, kind of depressed that I missed it. So then when round three came around and uh, Calaveras 32 special sent me a note, said, hey, who'd like to who would like to participate in this? You know, I, I sent the note out to the team again. I thought a few more gear report people might jump on it. But uh, TJ jumped in uh, and, and did a really cool one. I you know, I'm not going to play the whole thing here, but I may. Um, Oh, hold on. I've got to scroll a little better. Act like I know what I'm doing here. Travis uh, P11 had a really neat little segment to open it. Uh, Fine Ape did a, a kind of a workshop thing where he uh, instantly changed a, a changed the mag from what a pistol mag to an AK mag or something. Or no, it was like a FAL mag, I think. Um, Defense Dad did some woodworking and. Uh, that one was kind of interesting. And TJ, TJ did some fishing. Let's see. He opened a beer with it. So, I mean, what else is new? Yeah, we, we need to. All right, let's find everyone who's here. All right, we'll just watch the ones for the it people only took who are here. Takes. 
Yeah. I bet. Yeah. So I, I, I mess with the editing here a little bit to cut in the mag toss a little better. Because I don't like the way other people do it. There we go. It's better with sound. So go watch it, definitely. But, uh, there. Look at him. Glorious, glorious hair. And I edited out all of the fighting with the gun where it wouldn't go full auto. And I was like, what the hell? Um, yeah. Now, so now would the, how pissed it, would the wife have been if you would have shot the Prius? Oh. You should have shot the Prius. No. We don't really yes. Do no, I should. Ooh, I should have done that with the other one because my wife got hit in in the first Prius and totaled it. And um, ooh, there you go. You should have kept it, man. That one got hauled off to the junkyard. I should have shot that before. That would have been good. All right. So apparently, um, there was a two shot burst guidance. That I completely missed because I think everyone else is doing. It. Well, yeah. my uh, just uh, my gun range doesn't allow mag dumps. <laughs> right. So, and where are you? I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska. Like general, Nebraska. Okay, because yeah. that was a new one to me. Uh, a few years ago, the three four years ago, I was down in uh, Florida uh, visiting the rat. And I actually took a day away from Disney to go and uh, visit the uh, – oh, and there's Calaveras who arranged it all, shooting to wrap it up. Um, and he did something that the, the round two didn't do. He tossed it off so we can keep the mag moving. In the prior one, the last person shot, and then he didn't toss the mag off screen. And I'm like, come on! <laughs> you got to set us up to do it. But that, that was pretty cool. So I like the toss the gear. We'll have to do something like that. And uh, that was a pretty cool project to be a part of and definitely liked it. All right. All right, folks, let's see. That, I think, gets us through the first couple segments here. Let's see. We'll stop that screen, go back to all of the people's. We're still here. Yes. All right. So now let's move into, uh, you know what, before we go to reviews, it will be published soon. Oh, yeah. I was just teasing you with that one. While we have Defense Dad here. Um, so you said your channel is, you know, helping, helping defend your, your family and your kids and whatnot. So. Uh, how you said you, you haven't been doing YouTube too long. So t tell me how this came about and, uh, you know, what, well, what are your aspirations here? Basically, you know, I'm a single dad and, and, and when I was looking at YouTube and I, to be quite, quite honest, I bought my first gun last year. I grew up shooting. I always had access to guns, but I was more of a gearhead. So to buy guns, I couldn't get the head work done on my engine that I wanted to do. So. Um, I decided there within about a mile and a half of where I live, there were two kidnapping uh, attempts on young girls uh, about a year ago. And that's enough, enough. My daughter, you know, we, we live right by a highway. Um, and so I decided to purchase my first firearm. And when I was doing the research, what to do, I did, I, there's all sorts of people out there who do reviews on guns and everything, but, I didn't see much from a perspective of the new shooter and like the mistakes you make along the way and the things you have to learn. So I figured if I start doing this and someone can at least learn from some of the make mistakes I made, like, so I bought my first gun. It was not the right gun. I, since I've gotten rid of that, hopefully I can help other people save their money and, and do a little more research and get the stuff they need. And if it helps one or two people, awesome. I don't think this is ever going to be a giant channel, but, I have fun doing it, and I've met a lot of really cool people along the way. And you've met us. Yeah. <laughs> cool people and us. So, yeah. Yeah. You beat me to yeah. it. I, well, I put this on the screen, so you can just type that in, and it'll take you right there. Um, 
or it's it's also in the comments now. So you go click the link there if that's a little bit easier. Uh, if you're in YouTube, you can go find that link. Uh, well, we certainly appreciate it um, that that you have um, taken that approach of trying to educate people and, and help them avoid mistakes. That's kind of uh, a little bit of, of the idea behind the gear reviews is helping people get the right stuff uh, the, the first time. So, you know, I feel like we've got a little bit of good alignment there. I, I certainly like the, the approach that you're taking and, you know, um, people learning through examples and seeing lots of mistakes really describes the reviews that I write. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're aligned pretty well there as well. Um, I like to ask a question like, you know, uh, aspirations and, and where you're going and what kind of things you like to do, because then, you know, we all hear that. And as we run across opportunities, you know, we can say, oh, hey, uh, so are you doing uh, like gun reviews, accessory reviews, uh, training type stuff? You know, what what kind of wh where would you say is your sweet spot today? Well, like, you know, I, everything I do is on my own budget. So I, I do reviews when I can. I, I borrow things here and there, and I've gotten some toys in the last year. So I've been, in fact, I'm getting ready to review uh, my first scope for the AR I just built. So getting that going. Um, but just things like I just moved in the place I live and trying to help people learn, like, I'm in an apartment now uh, and learn, like, where safe place to point the gun. Like, I am a second floor apartment. So those mm -hmm. people above me and below me. And wow. new gun owners don't start and look, think about that. Like if you guys, something happens in your house, I'm doing research up here because there's only one safe direction really to point that gun in my house that I not possibly flagging somebody below me or above me or beside. Me. So stuff like that. And like I said, re reviewing the gear that I have, I'm also a lefty. So I'm trying to get people some, uh, insight into what's left-handed friendly because mm. it, it's, it's more limited. Uh, for example, my first gun was an SR, uh, SR9 and loved the gun, but there is a uh, plate on the takedown pin on that one and where, right where you as a lefty, you left, you rest your shooting, your trigger finger and I blistered my finger after shooting a couple hundred rounds of the range because it gets so hot. So that's one mistake I've made. And, uh, but just, you know, trying to, to approach it from like the budget side, like I, you know, spending eight hundred dollars on a gun is right now is not in my budget, so I try to review those things for people too. How in the world do we lose the host of the show? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but this Suddenly is a great got so show. Much better, didn't it? Best show Best ever. ever. Best he got more of us we talk. <laughs> <laughs> you need to come back more often. You're a good guest. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, is like if he's a host, who's going to let him back in the show? Oh, oh dang it! Oh, <laughs> there he is. The principal's back. Yeah. Pants <laughs> check, everybody. Oh my goodness! I missed you guys. I had to. I had to rush right back because I missed everyone. Who is that? Stranger, <laughs> Stranger danger. Stranger danger. <laughs> uh, and he's gone again. And he's gone. Fantastic. If his dad, you definitely got to come back more often. That's awesome. This just good stuff. <laughs> See how much more happier everybody is right now? See, just all relaxed and chill. And... <laughs> Give it five minutes and the, and the, uh, the crowd will grow too, you know? know. Word will get around that Jeff's <laughs> gone, you know? The viewers will start showing up. Hell yeah. Yeah. Monitoring this? Oh, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, defense dad, just a suggestion for some of your videos. Yeah, be sure to film and capture every holster you ever buy. Yep. Oh, I've got a collection uh, going with those. I oh, have no doubt. That is yep. one of the most, the biggest learning curves that nobody ever talks about. No. Well, and I, I've done some reviews of those, and so I, being a lefty, I've gravitated toward the German guns and try to find left-handed gun uh, holsters for German guns. Oh wow! Listen, he he's he he uh, Jeff left because you know his his overlord Cooper told him that he had to go and put a mask on, but since he's speaking at long lengths to us, and so That's he didn't right. want to give us he didn't want to give us the coof, so. Yep, yeah. over the, the inter interwebs. Yeah, over the webs. 
Obergruppenführer Cooper. <laughs> All he has to do now is get one of yeah. those voice things that changes the voice. It'd be perfect. Oh, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> voice. the voice box or whatever it's called. Where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so much fun. Okay. I think that is a good uh, – see, see, defense dad making great ground, talking about his channel, and then completely derailed him. So sorry about that. I'm going to blame Toby because yeah, – why not? He's beside me. He's right over there. It's that guy that did it right blame there. Toby. Story of my life. Everything's my fault. No one's coming to save yeah. you. Everything's your fault. No one cares about you. You're your own savior and your own protector. Get it done. That should wow. be a business that card. Thorough. That is a, a yeah. mantra for life. Okay. It had to be a big business card, but it'd be a great business card, like a three by five or something, you know? Just like this says. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, people remember it. <laughs> you see that business card that fool's yeah. handing out? It takes up my whole backpack. <laughs> We should do that at Shot Show next year. Just give out obnoxiously large business cards. I will work. That on say it. really nothing on it. Just like have them made out of AR you know. Have them made out of plates. Put in your plate carrier oh. for a good yeah. time. Call, call call TJ. You know GearReport.com. Yeah, and you can have one of us stand there going twenty dollars. One of us stand there going. Yep. <laughs> well, that that could be another thing to do in the booths, you know, like, hey, review. We all know review. this business yeah. card does yeah. not get you twenty percent off at the local, you know, yeah. buffet or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So I I agree, Calaveras. Yeah. Things go downhill when I'm here. I noticed because uh, when I was out for for a bit, uh, masking up, I was still listening. Like wow, the show got better. Ooh, our bad. Yeah, I just figured that's boring. <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. Um, so let's move on to the 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 business part of the show here. Reviews that will be published soon. Who has stuff that is upcoming that they want to talk about? So I guess I could talk about the uh, Boston Boston Jam Outfitters saddlebag. Yeah, you could. I could, but hang on. A <laughs> All right. But. But his wife yeah. said, you know, you're not going to be reviewing anything for a while. So <laughs> <laughs> close, close. But the no, the uh, the Boston Jam saddlebag. Um, I'll probably start publishing something here on that very soon in the next couple of weeks. It'll just be a written article only. I won't do a video for it uh, because of the, you know, that was the agreement we had with them. Shockingly, that thing has actually been pretty darn handy. Um, you know, I don't want to give away any of the information and stuff, but I've put it through some interest, some interesting ringers. You know, I've, I've used it like a, as a tool saddle bag. One of them, they sent me two, a brown and a black. One of them I've been using as a, a tool saddle bag on the uh, lift arms on my tractor. And you'd think, I know, right? You'd think that, yeah, it ain't gonna, no, nah, man, it's hanging right in there. And I'm talking, it's, it's not mounted well at all because I don't care. I just slapped on there with some bungee cords and stuff. And that sucker's hanging right in there with some heavyweight tools in it and doing a pretty good job. Um, and then I used a brown one. I've been slinging it across a rifle bag that I have that folds into a mat and carrying pretty heavy amounts of ammo and magazines and stuff. It's actually gone doing pretty well you know again i won't give away too much there um the for the titan rifle and the the cts um 53 or ctr 53 24 scope from crimson trace i've got the guy coming over to scope out our uh the, uh, the property and will be coming sometime between the 14th and the 21st to do some uh, predator calls uh, and we're going to try to take out some of the coyotes in the area and use Ooh. the titan to bring them down yeah so middle of the month this month yeah we're gonna have a little fun uh, punch some holes, some yokes. Um, so that's it, you know, on the, on the foreseeable horizon. Again, that, that one won't be published until hopefully after I go to uh, Jaeger's class in September, so October, November time frame, but still yeah. just making some progress. Uh, side note on the Crimson Trace CTS 50 or 3400, the red dot, 
Uh, as I'd mentioned in the last week, that now that's a thing where I'd moved it over to the inner ordnance XP shotgun. Um, the some interesting results with the Carolina Shooter Supplies reliability kit and dependability or uh, the aftermarket spring sets and stuff. Some interesting stuff happened with that. Uh, but the red dot's performing just like you'd expect. I mean, it's doing exactly what you'd think for it to. Um, uh, if you can bother to find 12 gauge ammunition, because just like everything else, it's starting to freak out too. But so, yep, just punching away on stuff. <laughs> so listening to the podcast uh, this morning, that was from, uh, I think it was from this Tuesday. Um, I, I heard what Clover and Trey said about the number of rounds they do for a review. Have you mm -hmm. altered the number of rounds you do for a firearms review now? Yes. Yeah, so glad you mentioned that because since you're the boss and the, the head gear guru of all gear gurus, um, I, I have indeed. Uh, however, the only firearms I have in queue at the moment are, are the three Oh, my wife just said, I mean, and I ain't getting no more right now. I don't know if she's talking about ammo or firearms or both. Um, but the only ones I actually have in queue for review are that, that Titan, which is a 308 Remington. And then I've got that, uh, that CTS, uh, that, that, um, Crimson Trace CTS 3400 uh, red dot that I've got on the shotgun. So the shotgun I'm burning through 12 gauge ammunition and I'm using dove quail load because it gives me the ability to test that Carolina shooter supplies reliability kit too at the same time. And so that's not, not impacting me too bad. Uh, it's getting a little weird to be able to pick up at Wally world, but you can still get a hundred for 16 to $21 uh, and then just cycle through it. So that one's not too bad, but that 308 that is starting to pose a little challenge for me because I burned through quite a bit of ammo, capturing my initial side ends, capturing, uh, you know, zeroing it, you know, shooting it out to a hundred quite a bit and getting footage of all that B roll footage. Um, and, and just some initial, you know, first thoughts and, and some initial zeroing the, the, the crimson trace scope in that, that, um, CTR 5324. And, so I burned through quite a bit of ammo there on that 308. And now I'm trying to find some at a reasonable price and it's getting harder to find and more expensive to purchase. So I saw that Palmetto State Armory was running a sale this weekend for, I think it's 15 bucks for 20. Um, I think it was PMC brand. I have to go back and look. So, but I mean, you're looking at, if you get a hundred, that's, um, you know, um, math, that's math. Wait, no, that's 60 uh, bucks. Yeah. Right. So if I get right. And so if you get 200, like I was thinking, it's gonna be 120 bucks. So dropping 120 bucks right now for rounds that I'm going to use later this year compared to how much have I got in there. So yeah, something's going to have to probably give a little bit of that, a little bit there. So Mr. Head Gear Report guy, if you know of anybody who has some 308 win that they could spare to, to assist me, because math is definitely hard. $15 per 20 if you're wanting 200 rounds. And again, that would only put me at, if you do the math on it, that's only 200 rounds through through that rifle, you know, plus like 100 I've already put through it. That's only 300 rounds. That's not really a very good review, to be frank. I mean, that's just kind right. of starting to get to the break-in period. So yeah, I've got some very, very real concerns of how I'm going to be able to pull that off as the year progresses. Um, hint, hint, if you have any out in that garage of yours. Yeah, yeah, come get it. Yeah, seriously? Because, I mean, I'll be riding through it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's lying. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah, because uh, I will be driving through Burlington probably on the 11th going to a shooting match. So Yeah, I'm not going to be here that day. <laughs> <laughs> well played. I may, be, well played. I may be, actually. Yeah. Uh, no, well stop played. by. Stop by. I've, I got some. Have you seen the review ammo stash? Or have no. we just talked about it? No, but I, we've talked about it, about how you're running into the same problem I have because because ammo distributors are not necessarily yeah. jumping on the, the bandwagon to give you ammo for reviews and stuff. I know you're just like every other reviewer. I, I get it. Um, but that 308 is a big challenge for me. So yeah. I, I do have some, though. That I mean, I used to have – Gear Report had a variety of ammo sponsors for a couple of years. And I am one of these weird people that I, just, I haven't gone out and shot it all up. It's – it gets used for reviews and you, you know, you've had some, Caleb's had some, you know, Alan's used some, Jose Juan, me. I mean, we passed it all over for the semi-local people. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've gotten some nine from you and I've gotten that 300 blackout for the two SIG, the two SIG reviews. And I've, I've still got like maybe 50 to 75 rounds of nine that, that you gave me. So I'm still using that yeah. on some of the reviews and featuring it. But yeah. 
yeah, the, the 308. Yeah, so let me know when you're coming through, and I'll. I I don't ha I don't know how much 308 I have. I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't remember. I've I've got. Yes, yeah, stop. I'll get you some 308. Yeah, that would definitely be helpful because again, I don't want to. I want to do this thing justice, and if I just run two or three hundred through it, and that ends up costing me, you know. You know, because uh, again, math is hard. If that ends up costing me another 120, 240 bucks out of my pocket and still getting a subpar, sub 500 round, you know, review on it, there's a lot of things wrong with that concept. So, yep, gotcha. I, you know, I'd like to think that the uh, readers, viewers understand that the challenges we have with ammo right now, but, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. We're we're helping them decide what the what's going to work for them and what isn't, and either it's used for or it isn't, and it doesn't really matter what the reasons are if we can't do it right. So it's either helpful or it isn't, you know. Any job worth doing is worth doing right. Come on, sir. There you go. There you yes, go. there is no there is no I in team. No shit. What was I saying? <laughs> yeah, Mitch. Mitch, yeah. would you like to talk about O light? I don't really want. To. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I have a review coming up for their uh, a new Odin weapon tactical light, and um, it's it's not bad. Um, I would rank it up there with some of the other industry leaders. I don't think that it's over the top great. It's not the best I've ever seen or or used. Uh, it's the first one of their products I've ever used, and uh, they sent me the the new one. It's in desert tan of all things. Um, but I like the fact that uh, when I inquired about some of the history of the light. They told me that they've already corrected some mistakes, some issues that were brought up in beta testing when they first released it, which is good to know. It has a, a magnetic tail cap, and a lot of people are having issues with uh -huh. their weapons when people actuate the light, the tail cap's coming off. So they put a locking mechanism oh. that locks the tail cap, and you can see it's locked, and it won't pull off. So anyway, um, I'll be releasing that pretty soon, and everybody can check it out. Um it's, I put it on my uh, PSA AR9 uh, to test on, on it, and I had no issues with it. Um, it's extremely bright, 2,000 lumens, and it's made out of a really nice uh, like aircraft-grade aluminum. It's got uh, rubber O-rings. It seals nice and tight. It's uh, IPX8 waterproof, so it, it's, it's a decent light. You're looking at 100 and, around 160 to 180, depending on which model you get. Um, but yep. again, it, it's, it'll all be in the review and, and what I got to test. I just didn't rush it because I was getting a lot of pressure actually from the manufacturer, which we talked about. And they were trying to have me beat their deadline, even though they sent me the light like 48 hours prior. And I said, I'll do what I can, but I'm not promising you anything because the people who read our reviews deserve to have items tested and not just push through so that you get your little tag for your sale and you know, I was yeah. polite, but professional. And, and I think I did a fair job on it. And like I said, I liked it, but uh, I didn't, it didn't blow my hair back. No offense, Jeff. You're a bastard, Mitch, <laughs> but that was uh, some very, very uh, deep thoughts on the O light. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. And I think you, you sent me a note, said that's uh, ready to go. So I will try to look at that tomorrow and get that posted. All right, cool. Anyone else have anything you want to talk about that is uh, on the way? I'm finishing up the, uh, the finally finishing up that uh, MK215 from uh, In Ordnance. Oh, yeah. That'll be, that'll be finished up probably Monday, Tuesday. So that'll be that'll be out there. That was fun. I got cool. fourteen hundred rounds through it. So, wow, wasn't cheap. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say you you went and used Dooley's ammo, right? But sounds like you didn't. <laughs> no. Uh, so well. so Uli was supposed to send me a Hellfire about three months ago. And I finally get an email from him saying, hey, how do you like the Hellfire? I haven't seen you put anything out on it. And I said, I never got it, Uli. He's like, you're kidding. <laughs> he just totally forgot. Goes, oh, my God, I'll send it out next week. Oh, <laughs> He's like, goodness. how do you like it? I never got it. And he totally forgot to send it. I guess it happened in early April, late March. So it's probably about the same time 
that he got all the Millsurp stuff in. I know he was big on that stuff for a while, so he probably forgot about it. But I was supposed to be getting one of those. I've got a uh, Faxon um, 9 millimeter Bantam coming in to uh, review. I've hmm. got a um, the, one of the GSGs. MP5 clone and 22 LR coming in with the MP5 conversion kit. It's going to be pretty cool. And I've got Bushnell sent me another optic. It'll be the TRS 26 coming. I mean, it's already got it, but I haven't done the review on that. Hmm. And then there's something. Oh, the Surefire SOCOM muzzle device and the Warden. I've got that review. Probably going to be actually uploaded Monday for your editing prowess. Awesome. All the stuff is coming in, but it's going to be coming in all at once. So it's going to be interesting how I do my time management. And, and what are you trying to show us? Is, is, is my cam on? Oh, my bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just sitting there talking. I mean. No, I, just, I didn't mean to push my camera. I'm sorry. I don't wear pants during this, so it doesn't really bother me that you don't either. So we're 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 good. We're okay. <laughs> All right. That that actually scared me for a second. It's like, oh no. Imagine being my wife. <laughs> I scare her every yeah. time I look at her. No, I, I get worried whenever I see a camera on and the person doesn't appear to know it's on. Like, oh, no, please be wearing pants. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we don't need this broadcast shut down. Uh, it's amazing that we're able to keep it going anyway, you know. I can show you updated Battle Pup if you want. She's almost 10 yeah. weeks old. Yeah, the pup. Let me, uh... well, I don't know how to flip it. She's sleeping right now. I don't know if you can see her or not. Man, about 10 weeks old. She's growing, man. She's getting big. Did we miss uh, it? Did well, I miss it? Well, she's sleeping on the couch, so I try to put the camera on okay. her, but she is not loving that. Okay. We wouldn't want her eating your camera. No, right? Right. I mean, it'd be cool video, but, you know, I wouldn't expect you to do that just for us. Well, I would if uh, if she wasn't just asleep. So I don't want to wake her up because yep. she's like a baby. When she sleeps, you let her sleep. Yep. I got you. All right. We, we've been going a while. Let's see. We've gone over our hour. We haven't actually gotten into the official shit shooting portion of the show. I think we're going to make that transition and it may be quick. It may take a while. I mean, we'll see how much shit there is to shoot, but uh, I didn't want to close out the show without giving everyone an opportunity to just kind of go off the rails and randomly say stuff because that can be fun. The show literally started off the rails, so I don't know where to go. <laughs> yeah. It went up back on the rails. That'd be boring. Okay, so did everyone see the uh, invitation to the... Uh... Okay, I'm going to assume that's oh, fireworks I'm hearing. You guys uh, don't uh, hear it, I'm sure. You better, but... you, better, you better lock and load, Jeff. Are the rooftop yeah. rednecks having fun outside? <laughs> Here, here's the problem. Um, we're, we're on a YouTube live stream, so I can't handle any weapons. You just cover, the, lot, cover the camera. Cover the camera. You're good. Yeah. Just turn the camera off and go to town, man. Yeah. Man. yeah. Sorry, put family. On, put on your I, can't risk, shirt. I can't risk the stream being shut down. Yeah. So if anyhow, it hasn't been shut down by now, it's not getting shut down. I hear you. Um, all right, Toby, I, de I derailed. You were going where I was going, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I heard the, what I'm assuming is fireworks. Let me get rid of this. Yeah, so people, if you can read that, read that. the IV-8888 range day. Um, so Ruben was able to go 
uh, to the last one and the rest of us, I, I punked out on it. I'll be honest. Um, I think most people were still willing to go, but there was literally like a hurricane charging that direction up through the Gulf and kind of making a turn to the east and going right over southern Georgia where this uh, big weekend long shooting event was. And I said, um, screw that. I'm staying home. And uh, and Ruben still went and hung out with everyone and uh, got wet and muddy and nasty the whole weekend. and. We didn't. So I'm looking forward to hopefully uh, getting back because, I mean, we'd been I'd been, what, three, four years in a row and then missed one. And that was a little depressing. So um, I know TJ immediately, like before the invitation came out, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going. So, um, Toby, you think you're going to make it this time? Yeah. Plan to. Yeah. Awesome. Um yeah, I mean, this is a good one. It's fun. Um, Ghost, you're going to fly for this one? Triggered. Not Ooh. sure yet. Uh, Trigger warning. I don't know what I'll do next week, much less October. You know, yeah. I'd like to, but who knows? It, it is a little ways ahead. Um, Mitch, have you, have you been to any firearms industry events yet? Not that I can talk about, but... Yeah, I would really like to go to see, uh, especially his, before going to a SHOT Show, because I've never been to a SHOT Show. Um, yeah. I'm looking at planning, and um, I definitely have the time off. I love the fact that the company I work for encourages it, so if I take it, I, I get the days off. I'll do yeah. it enough in advance and, and just fly out to, like, Columbus, Georgia, somewhere like that, which is close by, and then just uh -huh. figure out how to go from there. But uh, just trying to do the logistics right now. Um, it shouldn't be an issue, uh, but I, I definitely want to want to go. Yeah. Well, good. I hope you can make it. This, and and you really hit the nail on the head. This one is um, it's a great place to kind of get that warm up to learn how to talk to brands and learn how to function on a fire on an industry firing range. Um, and this one is very casual. I've actually heard some people describe it as downright dangerous. Well, that's cool. I, know, I, I think, you know, I work for Palmetto State Armory, so I kind of yeah. have a little bit of experience talking to brands and also shooting on dangerous rages. So I, I think I'm already set. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that the, uh, the Olight product, that, that flashlight was in desert tan. Have you, have you been in a desert? Uh, I, I can either confirm or deny that, Senator. Yeah, so I was curious if part of your review included how accurate the depiction of the desert was on the product. Uh, it's pretty pretty accurate, I'll say. It, it really brings out the sparkle in the sand. Oh, oh, that that's high praise, weighty words. Um, so... Defense dad, have you, I, I imagine being pretty new at all this, have you been to any, uh, any sort of industry event yet? I have not. Someday I hope to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. So if, uh, if, and you want to travel to the East coast, the, uh, the Iraq veteran event, uh, is something that I can send your name over to to uh, Eric, Eric's wife, Brandy, is the business manager. And if I send her your information, she, she, it, actually. <laughs> she will evaluate and we will see what kind of influence I have, whether she says, what? No. <laughs> or, oh, oh Jeff recommended this person. You're Please scared. let me get an invitation out quickly. Um, Brandy's pretty cool, but... Um, I think, uh, I don't know if she likes me or likes throwing stuff at me. Um, it's one of the two, I'm pretty sure. But, uh, but yeah, if that's something that interests you, uh, let me know and I can send your contact information over. Um, if you want to go as part of the gear report team, we could do that as well. You know, I'm pretty sure. easy going about this stuff, you know. Um, but I love helping people get introduced into that type of event. Um, uh, because, uh, I mean, it's really cool if you watch 
uh, if you watch YouTube stuff, if you like some of the other, the bigger YouTube personalities and you had never been around them, I think it's just kind of cool that at Eric's event, most of the big name firearms people are there, uh, YouTube and social media types. And you get to hang out and spend the weekend with them and, and shoot ungodly amounts of everything. Although, how's that going to work this year? Are we going to have enough ammo to just get crazy for the whole weekend like we usually do there? I don't know. What do you think? Will there be limits anywhere? Masks? No there'll masks? Probably be, there'll probably be some limits, but Eric's probably big enough where they'll, they'll thrash at him a little bit. Right. Yeah. He's, he's, he's probably stockpiled pretty good. Well, but it's not him. I mean, it's uh, it's the brands, you know, that, that bring the guns that supply their own ammo. I'd like to think that they'll be able to get what they need, but that's a little troubling. I'm getting worried now. What if they ration ammo? Because the way this event has always been, I, I have I have seen people complain afterwards privately about, hey, did you see that kid that was walking around shooting everything? There was like a 13-year-old three or four years ago that was just shooting. That kid must have worn a hole in his finger pulling the trigger the whole friggin' weekend. And people were complaining afterwards about, you know, everything was great, except that kid that burned up like a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks worth of ammo over the course of the weekend. And no one knew whose kid it was. So it, who knows, maybe it was like a big name person and, and it paid off. Or maybe it was just some kid that happened to be there. I hope, it, I hope it's not like range day when Chris Vector gives you a chance to shoot, uh, you know, Chris needed to shoot the Vector full auto. They can be like five rounds. And it's over like in 0.2 seconds. Hopefully it's not a five round yeah. dump, you know? And that was, uh, that. that's a, um, what do you call it? A range rule. If it was in the big range day, that's a range rule. If it was in Antares, they can do more fun stuff there. Um, and that was just Chris being douchey, if that's what it was. But, yeah. Some of the ranges have rules on how much you can shoot. The... Um, the big shot show range day like that. I know uh, a few years ago, what did uh, Franklin Franklin Armory came out with? It, it was when they first introduced the binary triggers that they're like, yeah, you only get five rounds. Like, really? That's it. But yeah, couldn't do anything fun with those. But no, uh, Eric's range runs there'll be belt feds there will be all kind of full autos of everything it's full-on craziness and there are there are parts of that shoot that there is so much burnt gunpowder in the air that it literally looks sounds feels like you were in a war zone um it is crazy you can't see 10 yards down the firing line because there is so much gunpowder and smoke in the air so it's rather glorious. And, uh, and that reminds me that uh, now every, everyone needs to go listen to, to Ghost Podcast that, that I was talking about. The, uh, it was Armed Citizen, right, where you talked about ammo. And part of the discussion was about um, ammo starting fires on the range. Right. Yeah, there was a, a viewer who said that uh, asked if we knew of any – projectiles that wouldn't start a burn fire. And I said, I've never really been around a fire. I mean, maybe in the Marine Dude, Corps, but I've every, never seen a burn fire from just someone shooting nine mil. Or been something. there, yeah. seen that. Every, every time at Eric's shoot, they have multiple fires on the range. Um, occasionally it's from binaries or, or something crazy. Usually it's just too many people shooting. Uh, off of steel and it's getting sparks or hitting vehicles, you know, they'll put cars out on the range and um, shit burns every time. Yep. So anyhow, all right. What else you guys want to talk about? Or shall we shut it down? We've been an hour and 34 minutes. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to bounce. Yeah. I know. I, I see the sleepiness in your eyes. It's getting past bedtime. Bedtime. Listen, when you when you're as old as me, you have to you know, you turn into a pumpkin. It happens. Really? 
I, well, you should well, know. You're like past me, so yeah. Really? I don't know. Actually, maybe not. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. You got more hair than me, so that probably counts for something, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any anything from the peanut gallery, folks out in the chat? Chat went from bumping like they were harassing me for not being here to start early. And then now it just completely died up. So I apologize. I think that is a commentary on how I've run this one. Um, people like it when it's off the rails, when we just kind of methodically plow through the agenda. It's like, yeah, oh, they're out. Don't take, don't take it too personal. Gizzard Gary's on live too. So, oh, yeah. he, went on at nine, he went on at nine. So why didn't someone tell me we're competing with that? Well, you don't compete until after nine. Oh, yeah. Have a safe, enjoyable, independence day. There we go. Everybody loves a good dumpster fire. Um, that, you know, it's funny you'd say that because um, I feel like that's kind of the story of my life, you know? Except that everyone doesn't love me, so I guess I'm not a full-fledged dumpster fire because everyone doesn't love me. Uh, I have my detractors. I know that is shocking to everyone, um, or not, but uh, yeah. But yeah, I think the show is more interesting when we liven it up a little bit. Interesting show to listen to. That's very generous. Thank you. Um, there we go. All have a great 4th of July. Yeah. So um, is anyone going anywhere? I know I heard some discussion earlier of you can only and and anyone who needs to drop off, you're, you're welcome to interrupt and say, hey, let me say my parting words and we can cut loose. Toby, do you need to say your goodbyes? Sure. I'll go ahead and do that. MiningRidgeArmory.com, Gear-Report.com. Check out all the content. Keep an eye on the Facebook channel and all that good, or Facebook page and all that good stuff. Follow, like, subscribe. You know how it goes. Yep. All right. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Later, Toby. Nice. Later, Later guys. Here. Thanks. Later, bro. Bye. All right. Can't believe you guys ran him off. Way it goes. Yep. I was trying to get it done a half an hour ago, but it didn't work. I know. <laughs> we didn't push hard enough. Yeah, maybe next time. All right. Well, anyhow, everyone, th thank you for coming and spending your Friday night with us here uh, on the panel and out in the chat. Yeah. You know, I used to say this a lot. I'm going to, you know. How's it going? Oh, I'm going to hell if I don't change my ways. And, you know, I meant it at the time. And I'd like to think that I changed my ways, but who knows? I think I'm kind of doomed from the outset here. Um, anyhow, everyone, th thanks for giving us an hour and a half of your time. We really appreciate it. Everyone on the panel, thank you for your contribution to, uh, to the show this evening. I've scheduled, I think, four more. And... Uh, Got a couple of them in the calendar. A couple more I'm going to have to add because I think it failed to save. But uh, but we're going through the end of the month, and we will revisit if we want to keep doing it. Um, it's worked pretty well when people show up, especially if you have something you're about to publish or you have published showing up to talk about it. And then, um, you know, if you, if you don't have anything to talk about, you're still welcome to – to come and, and be part of the witty banter and uh, keep me company. I've had a couple. I had one show where I was the only person here and I, I got off of that one. was like, Oh hell no, this isn't working. You know, I'm surprised am multiple not, personalities didn't come out at that point. <laughs> I, I am not interesting enough to carry a show by myself. So for those of you, I know Mitch and TJ have each been like the only person on a show with me. Thank you. Yeah. Please, please don't do that to the audience. All right. I can handle it because, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, but it's not fair to the audience when when I'm the only one here. Uh, I'm not remotely interesting enough for that. So 
All right. Uh, parting words. We want to go around the room. Everyone can uh, talk about uh, what, where they can find you and find TJ right here. Right here. Eurport.com, baby. Love yep. it. All right. You already told us what you got coming, so we appreciate that. Yeah, um, if anyone has thoughts for some more Florida stuff, I know we've had this discussion twice already this year. Um but I'm headed back to Florida again uh, towards the end of the month. So in a, in a few weeks, uh, which is crazy. Like I went years, years not going anywhere near Florida. Like we'd go down and see the rat. Um, what, three, four years ago we went. Hadn't been in, in several years and then hadn't been back since. And now it'll be three times spending a week each time so far this summer. Such a great time down here. It is. It is hanging out with Mama Son and Todd and TJ. It's a blast. It really is. Is it's okay if I invite everyone to come, come this down. time, right? Come on down. Yep. Have at it. Yeah, yeah. We won't tell anyone where TJ lives because that would go poorly if everyone actually showed up. Because because I'm actually but the state of Florida. I'm hurricane stocked right now, so I'm good. I'm, I'm stocked up well. <laughs> You got you got enough of those uh, the Korean hot noodles, so that that's good. Yes. All right. Awesome. Uh, Defense Dad, uh, we know the YouTube channel. I shared that. Uh, do you have any other places people find you, or is that your? your so place? far, that that's about it. Uh, do maybe a little, a few things on Instagram, but not much. Okay. All right. So we can go look for you on Instagram find you on YouTube. Uh, we'll have to talk if you want to do anything here at Gear Report. Maybe we can work something out there. Okay. Um, the boss is an asshole. I'll let you know that right up front. True. No, but, it's all uh, I, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the rest of the team, the rest of the team are pretty cool. <laughs> uh, all right, Ghost, where, where do we find you? Um. I wouldn't even try to find me, but I will say enjoy the weekend, celebrate our independence. One of the greatest documents ever written with some of the greatest words. And I'll just part you on this, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. That among these, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's about as good as it gets right there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm trying. Okay, I shouldn't do it. I, I shouldn't even go down the rat hole. I'm trying to figure out how to um, square up what you said against the requirement to wear a mask. I, I'm feeling like those aren't necessarily compatible ideas. If that doesn't make you happy, then you have the right not to pursue that. Mm. All right, we shall see. I'm just going to tell people, Ghost said... <laughs> and they'll just have to shut up, right? Enjoy life, man. Here's yeah. the thing. I'm not going to be get political or anything like that, but I'll say this. You can't fight any kind of flu virus or anything without your body's immune system being 100%. Get outside. Expose yourself to bacteria. It's okay. You're going to have to get your body back on track. Right. My body really needs to get back on track. And it's not just me saying that, but that's a, that's another discussion. Um, Mitch, let's see. Maybe will you find Mitch here at Gear Report also, right? Gearreport.com. That's where you find me. Absolutely. Until I decide to branch out and do something stupid, which it might be coming. We'll see. Yeah. Well, if Whatever. you want, yeah. Everybody have a great fourth. Like uh, everybody said, take care of each other. Uh, have fun. Enjoy your freedoms because people that fought and died for those. So you could go out and express your opinion and talk about things and have fun and grill burgers and do whatever it is you do. Just enjoy it. By the Were way, you, I think we just found our official Gear Report theme song. Just saying. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, man, I want to sing It's Your Thing. Uh, 
do, do what you want, want to do. do. But then I was like, no, but that's going to overshadow the prior singing that I am going to go back into and clip it out to play that as part of the intro for future shows. Unless I forget, which could happen, but I'm going to try not to. Here, surely it'll, it'll happen. Yeah, probably. Squirrel. Huh? All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Happy 4th, everyone. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. And with that, let's go ahead and call it a wrap. Um, I was about to say it. A great four, but when when the the G Web's father says something, you have to put it on the screen, right? Have a great fourth. I second that statement. Well, where's my camera? Oh, there it is. We'll see you at the range. <laughs>